Hello and welcome to Church of God in Christ Prayer and Bible Band, Lesson 13, Fourth Week. Our background scriptures, Exodus 2, 6. And in the Bible, Exodus 2, 6 describes the moment when Pharaoh's daughter finds Moses in a basket on the Nile River and realizes that he is a Hebrew child. So the verse reads, Exodus 2, 6, NIV. She opens it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she says. Psalms 30, verse 5. David praises God for his deliverance. And it reads, For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Psalms 34, 15. David praises God at all times. And it reads, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. Psalm 16. David flees to God for safety. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my God. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all of my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out liberations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With Him at my right hand I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Revelations 21, 4. This verse is a promise from God to remove the pain and the suffering that people experience today as well as the root causes of those problems. Revelation 21, 4 reads, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Devotional reading, Genesis 21, 10 through 20. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, Do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes then she went off and sat down about a bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. 
He lived in the desert and became an archer. Our central verse is Jesus wept, and that's found in John 11:35 King James Version. And then we have our New Living Translation, and that's also found in John 11:35 that says, "Then Jesus wept." Our key terms, wept, past and past particle, of to show emotion, and especially sorrow by shedding tears. Weeping, flowing with, accompanied by, or causing tears. Cry, to shed tears often noisily, a fit of weeping. Now let's begin. Introduction. There has been many misconceptions taught to people concerning crying. It has been viewed as a sign of weakness in many circles, but the believer needs to see that the value that God gives from from a situation that moves their heart to cry. Some issues move Jesus' heart to weep, and the believer needs to know that some issues demand that the believers respond by weeping. People cry because of hurt, as well as crying for joy. There is much comfort that comes from weeping. Believers need to learn how to embrace God's comfort and His strength that can be received through crying. Discussion Crying is a common human action that many emotions can trigger. God allows humans to cry because one of the benefits of crying is it gives the person a sense of relief. Also, It allows all the pent-up pressure on the inside of their mind to relax when the tears are released. When a crisis hits, it can shake a believer's faith and cause them to question his beliefs. He sometimes questions whether his trust is really solid in God. To know that even when he can't feel God, even when the situation seems to be a hopeless one, he can always trust the character of God. He has learned that during times of crisis that he can cry unto God and God will hear him and provide an answer for him. Crying brings a soothing feeling to a person. Tears are meant to be a temporary release that can help dull the pain. It then allows a person to calm his spirit and he can begin to make plans to come out of his crisis. The crying not only soothes the pain, but also helps lift a person's spirit. A believer must not be afraid to cry, but he cannot allow crying to be his solution to his problems. After he finishes crying, he must plan to move forward. For if a person continues to cry uncomfortably, he can find himself becoming depressed, which is not good for him or anyone else. In many societies, it's been said that boys and men don't cry, but when Jesus' friend Lazarus got sick and died, Jesus cried. When Jesus was notified that his friend was sick, he lingered where he was for two days. Jesus always has a purpose for what he does, even when people don't understand. When he finally got to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, he was already dead, and he had been buried for four days. The mourners were there crying. Lazarus' two sisters were weeping, grieving, and very sad. The people needed to know that Jesus is the Lord of the dead as well as the Lord of the living. Jesus knew that Lazarus dying would bring glory to God and allow the people to see who he really was. When he called Lazarus by his name, Lazarus heard him in the grave, got up and came forward. At Jesus' instructions, he was released from the grave clothes into a new life. Believers need to know that if the grave couldn't hold Lazarus down, nothing is powerful enough to hold them down. At the sound of Jesus' voice, troubles and woes must let them go. Hagar was a servant girl who found herself in a situation that was not of her making. Sometimes life gets a person caught in an unhappy situation which leaves them helpless. Many times in helpless situations, people tend to let go of their reserved spirit and cry. 
After she gave birth to a son for Abraham because of Sarah, his wife's advice, Sarah got pregnant and gave birth to a son. Sarah saw Hagar's son mocking and making fun of her son, and this caused her great anger. She told Abraham to put Hagar and her son out of their home. Abraham did what his wife asked him to do. He told Hagar she must take her son and return to her homeland. He gave her a small package of food and water, and she and her son left. They had to cross a large wilderness to get to her country. Their provision ran out. They had no water and were not able to find any. Hagar loved her son and did not want him to die, but she knew that if she could not find water, that he would die of thirst. So she sent him away from her and began to cry. God heard the voice of the lad and sent an angel to see about them. The angel of God cried out to Hagar out of heaven and asked her what was wrong. The angel told her to not be afraid, for God had heard the cry of the lad, and he knew where he was. The angel told her to get up and take her son by the hand, for God would make him a great nation. Then God opened Hagar's eyes, and she saw a well of water. She filled the water bottle and then gave her son a drink, and she went on her way. Conclusion God wants to heal and rescue the believers, for He is not willing that any should perish. His great steadfast love can pull the believer from where they are and place them where He designed for them to be. He said that believers could call or cry unto Him, and He would answer them and show them great and mighty things that they had not known. He will save, redeem, and bless the righteous when they cry unto Him. His transforming love is available to every believer that cries to Him in faith. Questions Number 1. What are some of the things that people cry about? Number 2. What are some of the benefits of a believer crying? Number three, what happened to Hagar to cause her to cry? Number four, how did God respond to her and her son when they cried? And number five, why did Jesus cry? Essential Thought Crying to God gets his attention like a crying baby gets his mother's attention. Just an added thought from the conclusion. God wants to heal and rescue the believers, for he is not willing that any should perish. Thank you for listening and for more information about this lesson, The Power of Crying. Please see kojic.org and to God be the glory. Thank you.